Hello and welcome. I would love to paint a snowman with you today and um, share a little bit of festive painting with you. I have uh, a few items that I've uh, worked on through the years and once you paint one of these guys you will be painting him on anything okay so Alrighty, so this is the PDF that you're going to get, and I give you, let's make this a little smaller, just so I can quickly go through it. So the supply list is here there for you, and what I've given you here is all the information about glass painting, guys. Okay, so this is a little bit different, and I'm going to share some tips and tricks with you today about glass painting and how I created these uh, little candle holders and I just got the little battery operated ones here and then you've got your practice sheet with all the elements that we're going to put on and I've given you two sizes of patterns here so depending on how big you want to make them if you need a pattern I even like using my own patterns just to get things really quickly done and so you can do some uh, solid coverage or you can do like a snow effect like a, a frosted effect on glass and I give you all the written instructions here so if you guys like to have a, a pattern package this is going to be uh, nice for you guys as well because you can print it out and then you don't have to depend on the video okay so I give you all the information on what to do with your glassware how to bake it you know some ideas of uh, different faces to do and different shape bases that I've made and then the the one that I made on the board for you and then also I even painted it on bags right so uh, and different wooden boards if you can go to your Dollar Tree or uh, Michaels or dollar stores you know sometimes especially right now they're going to have the different boards that you can paint on and make them unique and add a bunch of glitter on so this guy here is where I took the pattern from okay so he's just on a, a board that was cut out for me and I put a little hanger on the back of it all right so today what I'm going to do is do one that's similar size okay, or show you down here so you can see better all right so today I'm going to just do it on a seven by nine all right and show you guys how I laid them out how I painted them all right so I got my pattern here and my paints that I'm going to use today are going to be the uh engine red the berry wine and we're going to mostly stick with the uh, I like a sap to be a little bit darker, but if you have thicket, you can always use thicket and throw in a little bit of berry wine into your thicket, and that'll deepen it a little bit as well. And a little bit of orange, true pure orange for his carrot nose. And then we're going to do some holly leaves with the lime green with the, uh, the thicket as well. Okay, and a little bit of black for outlining and white and cobalt alrighty so that's the only color I didn't get out there we go cobalt okay so those are the paints and they're on the supply list uh, if you guys want to jump on it and get all that then um, you'll have all the other information for you as well um, I have loads of uh, glassware that I have accumulated through the years and you know if you're not a big drinker you can always these are just tiny little ones I'm going to show you an example with okay um, and I played around a little bit with the frost medium with the glass uh, the enamels okay so this is where I want to start with you guys here a little bit is just tell you a bit about um, glassware okay so there is a line of paint that is especially made for glassware. I find it has a little bit more sealer in it than the multi-surface. Okay, so it's going to be a little bit thicker. It's going to be a lot shinier when it dries as well. 
Okay, so I do prefer to try to stick as much as possible with the enamels when I am doing stuff that's going to be used a lot. It's going to be glassware that are going to be used and washed. You know, you want it to be a little bit more durable. But if it's going to be an ornament and it's just sitting on a shelf, then, you know, your multi-surfaces are great to use as well. Okay, so what makes this really fun is the mediums that come with them, okay? So, again, when it comes to mediums, yes, you can use your regular floating medium, okay? But the uh, enamel series also has their own flow medium as well, okay? And they also have a clear medium and a, one with a little bit more creamy color. Um, and it just helps to flow your paint a little bit better and uh, just like your floating medium okay so it is highly suggested to use the floating mediums to go with the paint or the surface that you want to paint on so that you'll get that maximum uh, durability out of it okay so they also have another medium that is really fun and it's a frost medium and this is where you can just put a little bit of your paint color of choice into the frost paint and i'll show you a little demo on that in a little bit Okay, so it's a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. So enamels or the multi-surface will work, okay? So it just depends on what you have and also how much are you going to use it and wash it. And the new bottles now do say that um, it is... Let me show you on here. Maybe it'll... Uh, my focus, autofocus will pop on for you here. Indoor, outdoor, dishwasher safe. So I've always been really leery about dishwasher safe when I've been painting, even with the, I don't know, I'm just nervous, right? It's probably fine if you bake it properly and leave it the time that it's supposed to for cure. All the instructions are on the back, guys, as well. Okay, so if you pick up the, uh, the multi-surface or the enamels, it's going to tell you how to bake it. Uh, you got to air dry it for 21 days or put it in the oven and then let it come to temperature for 30 minutes and then just shut off the oven and don't touch it again, okay, until it cools off. You do it overnight and then that way in the morning when you go to get it out of the oven, it'll be nice and cool and you won't have any problems. So I've done it before. I have not had no problems at all. Okay, so maybe to show you guys a little bit closer. Okay, so I just did like an uh, a solid coverage got too much exposure going on over there all right so you can do them really simple and i originally did these really simple so that i can do them for paint parties in my neighborhood and we're having kids eight year olds and up so i was trying to make these guys a little bit simpler so i just made like little simple circle eyeballs on them but uh you know a traditional little smile but You'll see that, you know, there's a couple different uh, smiles that I've showed you guys in my examples. Okay. And then again, once you learn how to do some pouncing and these holly berry leaves, you can always do fun things like this. This is actually a candle holder that I can put, you know, a pillar in there. Or actually what I've done too is I painted on another glass where this is like a candle holder now to me so when you're painting guys always leave that rim around the top like whatever you think the lip is going to touch they always say to stay away from the lip area if you're going to actually make them into drinking glasses okay so i've got a drinking glass here that i played around with okay some water goblets and i've stayed away from the top rim wherever the lip is going to be okay so that's the only really thing you got to worry about is um in the um drinking glasses okay so if you're gonna make a candle holder out of it you know then it's not so bad you can go up you know a little bit higher and then you can even put this here and a little tea light in there and uh make this a nice centerpiece for your table or your coffee table wherever you want to put it and um so yeah, I'm going to do a little bit uh, of demoing. Actually, I, I started this actually at a craft show one year, doing demos, showing people how to do stuff. And I never did finish it. So maybe I'll finish it with you guys today here a little bit quickly, just to show you a few things to keep in mind when it comes to glass painting. You know, you can make so many different uh, cute festive. So that's what I'm calling this, this uh, 
project is a festive painting because once you get the idea of it and I show you guys some more inspiration then you know you'll be able to uh, paint on anything. Alrighty, so let's get some sap out. And what I like about doing the frost and the painting like a scruffy, like doing a little bit of a reef style on here, or like some sort of background, gives it the glass tooth. So then when you go to paint your design on top of them, it actually sticks a little bit better. So I, the number one complaint about glass painting is the transparency of it. It's going to be no problem for you to, to paint on top of it because uh, paint will stick to paint a little bit better than the original glass. And also to back up a little bit more, you should always wipe down your items with alcohol, rubbing alcohol, 70, 90% doesn't matter, and to get any oils or fingerprints off your glass before you start, okay? And then try not to touch that area while you're working on it. Right. So if you haven't used or played with your scruffies before, you know, we can definitely double load these guys and put two different colors on our brush at the same time. And a lot of times the darker color will take over. So try not to put too much of the darker colors and then move up in your little pile. Okay. And then you can easily scrunch scruffy a, oh, keep this down. A little bit of a, a little bit of a background to it okay and we'll put a little bit of lime green in there so you can play around with your colors okay and make a nice little round circle and then add a couple different holly leaves and some berries and you know it's going to be out the door really quick you can make christmas cards you know um, there's so many different fun things we can do right. and sometimes you do have to let things dry uh, especially when you're working with fabric guys if you find those gift bags or those recycled bags i can put a link for you where I got them here. I'm sure they'll send them anywhere. And um, you can probably get them down in the States too. And they're just plain and then you can just paint your own designs. When you Then I would highly suggest that you pick up the fabric paint line. Okay, then you'll be able to fold it in half and throw it in the back car or storage and um you'll be able to fold it and it's really flexible if you paint on fabric bags with this paint then it's going to be very hard and if it's crumpled then you know you're going to have uh issues with it so sometimes even on glass and or fabric you got to do two coats let it dry and then you know then you can easily do your design on top I'll show you a couple of the uh, bags that I made. All right. And you can fold these guys, okay? This is with the fabric paint. And it's the Folk Art, oops, sorry. Folk Art series, okay? And especially made for fabric. And it has its own medium too, guys, okay? So if you plan on doing a lot of... Uh, fabric t-shirts jean jackets uh gift bags stuff like that then i highly suggest you jump on that line of paint because it is really really uh smooth and creamy and it goes on really really nice but it does absorb into the fabric so um you definitely have to put either a base coat of white or something to get it to be bright especially on those green bags or red bags because they're so strong in color and to get a nice vibrant white you definitely have to put sometimes two or three coats onto the fabric bags if that's what you want to do okay so i'm really um talking about like because i do i paint on anything so i'm kind of like really sharing i paint on anything guys today but like I said, if you need more help or instruction, it's going to be all in the PDF that already. 
So what I like about uh, this design is that a lot of the background is uh, already white. Okay, and so you don't really have to do a lot of, um, put this right beside here, of work to this, right? So I might need a lot more white. And we'll put out all our colors that we need. Quickly. It's a, it's really deceiving. We don't really need a lot, a lot of blue. Trying to use up the rest of my paint, so some of them are almost empty. All right, and we don't need a lot of berry wine, just a little bit for shadowing the hat. Oh, and I forgot you need glitter. Always need glitter. Alrighty, so I'll show you guys how I pop a little bit of glitter into that too. So I'm just going to put a little dab of yellow over here. And then I'll put the black in later when I need it. And the orange when I need it. Okay, so we'll leave that over to the sides. And we will play with a our pouncer. So if you have a, a half size or a from the Pro Set, or depending on how big you're gonna, you guys are going to make it. Okay, so you're going to need your pouncers, your scruffy brushes. Okay, so I love the, the half size that you get in the Pro Set. You can order this separately, guys, if you want. And uh, just get that brush if you want. Because it's only these two, the really small one and the really big one. Right, but again, you can cover a lot more area faster with the bigger brush. Okay, so sometimes you want to go into a smaller brush if you need to get into more details or, you know, you want to work a little bit differently. You can play around with the two different sizes. Okay, so we might even need a tiny bit of floating medium here too. So I'm just going to pop that over in the middle here. So hopefully it'll stay out of trouble. Okay. So if you notice in my design here, I've got three layers of blue going on, or at least two really. Okay, so I've got a very, very faint, faint, faint blue here. And then where the body of the snowman is just a little bit slighter, darker blue and up underneath his hat. Okay, so what I like to do with the patterns, guys, is it also saves a bit of time too sometimes if you work around your pattern. So if you've never done a pattern before, I just want to show you quickly how to put your pattern on. And I was playing around with that app, okay? Well, on the easel, guys, that wasn't me. It was Facebook. I wanted to do a temporary <laughs> profile picture, and it actually put it up on an easel for me, and it gave it an oversized look, and I'm like, I kind of like that. So if you want to try the oversized look, you know, it, it did cut off some of the top of his hat and it didn't really give you much room for his button. So you can leave the button out if you want to try and make him a little bit more oversized. Okay, so that was quite fun, I thought. And then, or you can put him this way so that you can get the whole hat and everything in there. Okay, so it's up to you which way you want to turn your... Uh, canvas. Alrighty, so carbon paper, graphite paper, whatever you want to call it, depends on how old school you are. There's a dark side and a, usually a lighter gray side. Okay, so you're going to put that down and you can tape it into place if you want just to hold it, you know, down for you. But this is a pretty quick pattern. Okay. And uh, you probably just hold it and just enough to give you some markers of where everything is going to be. Okay, so I'm just going to throw in my hat really quickly. Give a little bit of marker of where I'm going to pounce his little poof. Okay, and just quick placement. 
Here I kind of left room for my holly leaves in the pattern. Okay, just a rough placement. Okay, little muffs. And you don't have to be too, too neat. And you can even go inside the lines if you're afraid to make it too big or whatever. And then that way you always know you can always go bigger, right? And cover that lead. Okay, so if you have problems erasing stuff after, uh, if you put enough paint on it, it will cover the graphite. Okay, and then your little circle where you're going to put your little button. All right, so what's a little bit more important if you need, you know, that little extra preciseness is make sure that, you know, you put these lines in pretty neat. Where his eyebrows go, one was a little bit lower than the other, and then where his nose is going to go. Right? And then depending on what kind of face you want to make, like the ones that have a little bit more opening, then I just, I colored it in, right? To, to make it look like his uh, mouth was open. Right? And then I did a fun one. That one sold quickly, that one there with his eyes closed. Right? So he was uh, pretty fun. So you could always play with different eye styles. All right. So now we've got our pattern down. All right so now what i like to do is try to work around it so then that way i don't have to wait for anything to dry and where it's already white i don't have to worry about you know doing a lot of coverage so i just have to kind of give the background all a little bit around this area here and then i'm going to start working around it in this face okay does that sound like a plan any questions there Uh, fabric paint with floating medium? No, but you can um, mix the fabric medium with the folk art. So that will make the paint a little bit softer and more flexible if you put the medium from the uh, fabric paint. So that might be a cheaper option to try as well for like to, just to play around. And then if you feel like you're really loving it, then definitely go get the paints. But uh, you will see a difference in the quality of the fabric paints. And, and it'll crack on you if you put... Um... And you don't even need a lot of floating medium, guys, usually. I try to, even with the glass paint, I try to play with the paint by itself as much as possible. And only when I need it as a backup, that's when I put floating medium and stuff. It's not automatic. Try to put a little bit of paint out at a time so it's fresh out of the bottle. And then that way, um, you know, it'll be always nice and, and pliable for you. Okay. Alrighty. Just make sure you guys can see. I'll get a little closer for you. Alrighty, so the first thing I want to do is load my scruffy brush up really, really full with white. I really want lots of white over here. Okay, and then I'm going to come over and just tip a little tiny bit of blue. Okay, now tip the blue on the outside of your little scruffy pile. Okay, and then you're going to dirty this little area here. So that when you need some fresh white, you can always just pop in, go back in and out, in and out of your white. Okay. So what we want to create is a baby blue, a little bit softer blue. So now we can just focus on the middle part of where you're, don't go over here, okay? Just stay with that really soft, soft blue. And when you run out of paint, I come over here, start loading it, and then I come in again to soften. Okay. Need a little bit more white paint. You're gonna just pick it up and put it over here in your little blending area that you're pouncing. Okay, and get that really nice soft baby blue. All right. So what I like to do is just start pouncing all the way around the outside, and you'll see if it's too dark, then you'll definitely need to add more white into it. Okay, and then slowly work all the way around. Your pattern okay. 
Okay, so you can always lighten things up and darken things up a little bit later if you feel like you want to add more. Okay, so just the first base coat coverage. Okay, we need more white. Okay, and freckle some white over your dark areas so that you can still see some a few darker spots. Okay, so we're just going to keep working our way all the way around. And just give it that little soft hue of blue for a pouncy little background. Let me get in that little crook where his hat goes. Just a very soft little pouncy background very soft into into the background corners where it just gradually disappears okay so you guys can also play if you wanted to try the pouncing on your glassware okay give it a nice soft baby hue of background of snow you can use a uh, just like this Okay, and it gives it a little bit more of coverage. Okay, then if you were just using the frost. Okay. And then you can always add a snowman um, just like this on your glass as well. If you wanted to have like a drinking glass. Or you can always paint complete full coverage. I flip it upside down, paint this all black, okay, and then go higher. Right, so now I want to pick up a little bit darker blue. And I'm just going to come up around the back side of his little scarf here and give him a little bit of an illusion of a shoulder. Okay, and then come over here, give him another little shoulder. Okay, just very loose and okay. And then now we're gonna start pouncing around in his face. So the darkest part is going to be all up underneath his hat. Okay, so you can just get that dark in there and you can always soften it a little bit. And just lightly pounce some white over it to, to give it more freckly look. Okay, and we're going to work all the way around the outside of his face. And all the way underneath his chin. Okay, so I like to just lightly pounce over it so then you can kind of see uh, a little bit of your line work. Okay, so that way you know where it is. Right, so just freckly go over it really lightly so you're not covering it too heavy. All right, because you do need it more white anyways around the middle of his face. Okay, and then you can just lightly, lightly freckle that. And add that shading all the way around in a circle. Okay, and if you do cover it and you need those eyes again, then there, I just kind of wipe some away so that I can see where they are. Okay. Little tricks to save you some, some work later, okay? Alrighty. So now we want to make sure that we have our uh, scruffy really, really clean. 
uh, for the next step or grab another one okay and usually these scruffies work best when they're really really dry so if you do have to rinse the glue out of them guys make sure you really sandwich it into a towel and, and really uh, be mean to it in a way you know where you're really just pushing it in there and drying it as much as you can to, to take the blue out okay so we won't need it right now but you can you will definitely need to clean it out or maybe you have a smaller one that you can use for this area okay so it's really best that they are uh, really dry so it really absorbs lots of paint and when you spread them right out and play with them you know it makes them even more speckly and freckly when you go to pounce with them okay so the more you beat these guys up the better they look when they're brand new they're very stiff and uh worse actually you might even have one here a brand new one right so they don't look very fluffy right so you've got to really stick it in your hand and fluff them all up and sometimes it works better too for the very brand new ones like to wet them a little bit and then maybe that'll help and then let them dry like this and then um, then maybe it'll stay a little bit more fanned out for you a little bit okay. so I'm just not very nice to these guys except for I clean them very very well so that I don't get that thick paint stuck in there and then it goes hard as a rock and it won't let you do anything so taking care of these guys just the same way okay so now we're going to pop in uh our hat right so what i like to do is just get the color in there for now okay and stay away from the very very edges for now just get that good coat in there with your engine red okay. my quick ways of doing things and over here you're going to be a little bit covered by your uh poinsettias or your holly leaves okay so doesn't really matter too much over on this side okay so I'm trying to you don't have to be really neat about it because all that little flip flopping around and little thinner spots or thicker spots it kind of gives it a little bit of texture in it so you don't even have to just you know, make some areas a little bit heavier than others okay and then what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to side load into my berry wine I need to pick up some a little darker color and then I'm now I'm gonna go around and do all my edges with my berry wine okay, and just wisp into this area you're gonna cover that anyways with some puffiness okay so just go over and if you feel like you need a little bit more moisture add a little bit more engine red or a little bit of floating medium not much though just add a little bit more engine red if you need it okay and then we're going to go all the way around the edge of this hat okay. and just flick that in there so now we want to give him a little bit more of a crease okay so right here is, i have a an area here that's marked for you guys that you can kind of give it a little so it looks like the top of his head you can always you know make some little random lines here and there but because of this side you're not going to see it too much okay. and that's it for his hat and simple right so now we're going to need our smaller scruffy and here I try to stay really, really white as possible. If there's a little bit of dirtiness from your blue trickled over, that's not a big, big thing, but you do want it to be nice and white. Okay. So I guess a little tiny bit of dirtiness is not a bad, bad thing. But you don't want it dark, dark, dark like your background, right? So then we're going to puff in our little puffy rim around his hat okay. if you have glue loose glitter 
then I would suggest to get it out right now and sprinkle it into the wet paint. If you have glitter that's already in paint, a glitterific paint, or um, you know any of the glitter uh, type stuff that has the pre-glue in it, okay, then you can definitely uh, use some of that. I have a lot of different glitter from all over the place. Oops. Alright, so this is just the dust. And I know Donna has it too on her site. So you can just sprinkle that in there onto the wet paint. And then if you have any glitter phobes that you're giving this to, just make sure you spray it with a little bit of a sealer after. So then that way it holds down all the glitter on you. And then don't forget it's hot. Okay. And like I said, you need a little bit of depth and darkness. You can dirty it a little tiny bit, but mostly it's going to be fairly white. Okay. And then just top that around so it moves around to all the wet paint. So hopefully your hat's dry by now. But a little bit of glitter on his hat won't hurt at all. And then I have a old plate here. So then I'm going to just drop all the excess dust off, pat the back of it, get rid of any looseness there. Okay. So festive, so festive. Alrighty. So definitely play with all the different elements, practice eyes and stuff like that, and mouths and how you're doing his little cheeks and stuff like that. You know, is a good idea to, to do if you're not comfortable in make, putting them together yet. All right. So then we're going to, we can put some cheeks. All right. So now we definitely want to have our, our little scruffy pretty clean to get rid of that blue. So I want to go and make a little bit of a pink. Okay. So I'm going to... Double load my scruffy again, right? And then just kind of spin it back and forth, back and forth, just to kind of give yourself that little bit of a pinky color, okay? Keep adding a bit of white until you got that color of rosy cheeks that you like. Okay? That's all I do is just kind of play around. Now you have way too much paint in there sometimes, so blot it off a little bit on a towel or work on it a little bit on you guys can see in the corner here you know just kind of dab a little bit off right and then place in your little rosy cheeks and then some of this rosy cheeks are going to be covered by the This little soft, a little bit more rosy in spots. You can always just pick up a little bit more of the darker pink, you know, and work that around. Maybe just on the inside of his cheek a little bit, give him a little bit more definition. Really nice and soft. And then again, we're going to need our pouncers again with the green and um, sap or thicket so that we can put his earmuffs on okay so i'm just drying out my scruffy really good on the towel and then we're going to come over and pick up some of that green okay. and then what i did was i put a little bit of the darker area in the back so it looks further away and then slowly work yourself closer to the front of his face. And then do the other side. Same way. Put the dark to the outside. Give him some little fluffy little earmuffs. And then now I want to go pick up just a little sprinkle of white. Just to give it a little bit of highlight. 
no one's earmuffs. And you can always sprinkle a little tiny bit of snow on his hat too later with no green. Okay, so right now there's green in there. I always let that dry. Okay, so it's pretty quick and, and uh, quick project really guys. Okay, so when it comes to doing the holly leaves, all right, I do have it all broken down for you guys here in the pattern and how I did the the belt on the um, the other big vase. Okay, so there's lots of different ideas here. You may not use the belt here, but you know, if you do do the hat, the top hat type look in that big vase that I did, then, you know, that's how I put the belt together. So, you know, I've got a lot of different varieties of things on the uh, practice sheet. Yeah. So I'm just going to set this over to the side and let this dry for a second and show you a quick holly leaf. Why not put it on here, right? So we're going to double load our brush. We find a small spot here that's out of the way. Okay, and you can even add a little bit of yellow in it or you could use your lime green in it you know so there's a lot of different variations and so i like to lighten up my lime green a little bit sometimes with a bit of yellow and you can do like a half and half gradient so i'm just going to back up here a little bit so you guys can see better so basically it's like a um, railroad track is what Donna called it, okay, and you're starting off with like your one stroke leaf, but you're pushing up, and then you're going to do like a U stroke coming up, and then you're going to push over to end in a point, okay, and sometimes it's easier to flip your page around, then you can always do it that way, whatever is easier. Sometimes it is easier doing it upside down. And you can also make them with the dark on the outside, depending on your background, guys. So if you have a really dark background, then maybe you'll like to have your holly with the light on the outside. Okay, so if you have a really dark, uh, no, the opposite is true. So you want it to stand up. Right, so up, up, and you can even go up again, okay, and with a little bit more pointy, and then come out. And up, 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 and over. Okay. So the paper's a little bit dry, I'm just doing a quick demonstration here for you guys. Just fill that in if you need to. Okay. And then, of course, your stems. Okay, so sometimes it's nice to go into your leaf, add other little stems where those points are. Okay, so I'm just basically using the edge of my brush, flicking out so that. Okay, so it's pretty dark, so just to show you, but you want them a little bit more natural looking. You know, so a little bit lighter. Okay, so all of that is on the practice sheet for you guys. And like I said, once you have your background on the glass done, then, you know, it's very easy to paint on top of it. Okay. Up, 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 and then out. And it depends on how big you want to make these guys too, right? So right now I have my uh, 12. So if you want to make them a little smaller, then you'll have to downsize to a 10. Okay. And see, I just did two bumps here on these ones. This one I did three. So you kind of change it up a little bit so that way they're always a little bit different. Oops. See that? <laughs> 
I'm going back and forth my brush. Okay, so just wipe it out. I'm sure you guys are going to do that too. Okay, so you can see that the whiter, lighter one stood out nicely on the outside. Okay, so you can always do, you know, a variety of them. So it doesn't stand out as much. Right? Because I lightened up my background. Maybe you want them to be subtle. Okay. And then bring in your stem. Show you again. And then sometimes you can work down too. Okay. Once you get really comfortable. And then for the little dots, I just use the back of my brush. Okay, and you can just plop on a couple little circles, or you can use the little wooden daubers if you like. If you want to add a little bit more highlights to them. Okay, so again, if you're making them big, maybe you want more detail. If you're making it small, then just quick little dots will tell people that it is a little berry. Right? And then you can always put in just a little tiny white highlight you know, if you really want to put something on them, and then that'll be your little poly face that you can put on anything. Okay, so I did make these ones a little bit bigger. See with the white behind it, the dark stands out more, right? But while we have the green on our brush here, I wanted to add his scarf. Okay. So let's add some more of that lime green and sap. Okay. So basically what I did was just a big stroke and then where the details came was with the liner brush after. So I didn't spend a lot of time. Um, this was supposed to be a quick project, guys. You know, you can do it with the kids at home through the holidays. You can get them painting too with you and um, have fun with it, right? The dark underneath his chin and then here. I add little streaks of white through it here and there, so that kind of gives it a little bit more movement. And then for the the scarf ends, I just did two really strong, big one, like a slider leaf kind of look. Really push down and slide. More coverage. Out. just play with it okay. make it the shape you want and then we'll use a little bigger brush I might have used the three quarter if you need a little help there just to give it some shape And then let that dry a little bit and then we will start with our eyes okay so with our liner brushes guys we want a little bit of black now I find a little spot that i can water down a little bit so you always want to add when you're doing the liner work then you want to add just a little bit of water. It helps to spread it a little bit more just for uh, any like curly cues or any line work. But you don't want it too, too watery, okay? And you don't want to load up your brush too, too full, okay? So a lot of times I just curl my brush to, to get out of there and then I'll wipe off the excess. And then I try to just pick up the very little bits on the tip so that you can really pick up 
just enough to make nice little fine lines. So I did his eyebrows just in two little ticks, okay? So you can always just press down and then pull over. Okay, and then flip your brush over the other way, press down, and then pull over. And then again, just basically outlining. And then if you want to give them different color eyes, in my pattern pack I actually gave them blue eyes. Um, but if you want that little loose speckled look, it was just playing modeling with back and forth with white and black and just getting random randomness there. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's give them some blue eyes. Okay, so I'm going to pick up my six. And I'm going to color this guy in. Or girl, depends on the lashes that you put on them. Okay, so a little bit of blue. Keep the whites of his whites showing through from the background. Okay. Every time I do these, I try to make them a little bit different. Okay. All right, so let's go back and pick up our black again, and then now we can line all the way around his eyes. And sometimes you want to actually cut off some of that circle. You don't want it to be a perfect circle. Okay. So then that way you're only seeing uh, little bits of it. Okay, so you're going to cover right over the top of that circle so it makes it look more natural that way. side. And I want him to look a little bit like he's looking to the right. So I have his eyes on the same side pretty much over here. And now let's put a little black dot in there for his pupil. You can play around the eyes. You can add little streaks of white bits in there too if you really really want to. And then just add a very, very, very subtle line of black around the blue. Okay. And then like, you really want it really wispy and thin to get those eyelashes. Okay. Just like in, sorry, about two thirds over to the eye. A little bit bigger as you work. Oops. On the outside of the lot. <laughs> Outside of the eye area. Okay. And just do a little wispy little strokes. Okay. One side is always going to be easier to do than the other. I always play around with them a little bit. Try to make them look about the same length. Leave a little bit of a space in between them. And then as you go up. And really keep going if you want a little bit more then once you go a little bit more then it actually starts looking like more like a girl okay. so if you stay over on the outside then it looks more like a boy but as soon as you add these little tiny little hairs around the front part it seems to change gender on you <laughs> okay so then we can make a little just random happy face here and a little tick there for his cheek and then you always put a little, little extra one on the knee so that it looks like it's got some lips all right and then also your little button if you want to add a black button pop in my little circle and uh, get that coverage and dry and then you can always just float in a white circle, white strings, bright, white uh, threads. A little circle around it after when it tries. This is actually pretty translucent, but you know I think that it looks okay too. You know, you don't have to have it totally coverage. Okay, so we'll just let that dry, and then. 
also, oops, sorry, getting ahead of myself. We want to add some dimension around our uh, scarf, right? So get all this lining work done. Okay, and then I just put some little rand. You can always just put random ones. Okay, so it looks like wrinkles. But the outside one you want to be defined. Okay. And then you can add some dots on it and you know, decorate it any color you want. And this time I'm going to make them a little bit more wavy looking. There, okay, I think that's all the lining work done. Okay, so let's add our leaves up at the top you like and everything love this the dish thank you fun to see them come alive <laughs> i try to keep keep an eye on you guys every once in a while pop those questions in and i love hearing all your comments and hanging out with me and uh looks kind of funny with no nose eh so we want to add some brighter green here with our sap so I did three different leaves here. Okay. Yeah, I hold my brushes in my mouth all the time. Okay. So I did three. And then I also did some little pine looking little wispies in there too. Okay. So we can start off with you know one over to the side if you want and these ones are going to be a little smaller guys so you gotta it's always easier to practice big and then you got to tighten them down and make them look smaller okay so it's all about your pressure okay you can make them look a little smaller okay. give that a little bit more peak And then if you want more coverage, then you can always go over it again. Peek them out this way. So he's got a little flip to him. Okay. And down. Okay. And if you only have room for two, or, you know, you can always do two. And then we'll put one over here. <laughs> Trying to look over my work without putting my head in there. And there. And there. Demons in and you can just make them simple too like i said if you're making them small just put one little line through if you're making them big and you really want all that detail in there then you know you can always add a little bit more okay and then we're going to add our berries and i just use the back of my brush guys and just make them a little bit random here and there okay. and then you can always make some smaller ones you know, in your scarf and then let this dry and then layer another dot of white on top of them Makes them pop out a little bit more a little bit of a row of dots here and there if you do your biggest one in the very middle and then gradually smaller going out it looks like it's a little more 3d and it wraps around the neck getting little details here even though it's supposed to be quick i always like to throw in little extras on how i get my looks okay, just cover that in let that dry really good and then you can always add okay so you really need the nose eh 
All right, so I'm going to clean our brush. And this time I am going to come down into a uh, 10 or a 8. Okay, so you kind of got to figure out what size brush you're going to be able to fit his little nose in there. So that's when I used a tiny little bit of the Engine Red and the uh, Pure Orange. Okay, so my this is a brand new brush, guys. It's dry, and I didn't dampen it for a reason because orange is sometimes one of those colors that uh, will be a little translucent. Okay, so you need mostly orange, but just a hint of, and you can always side load into your red if you want. Okay, so I'm just trying to pick up enough for a few strokes we don't need a lot of this right and then if you want to lighten it up just a little bit with some white you can always add just a little bit of white into that orange not too much okay. I started at the base of his nose and just to give it that shadow look and then like little sideways U strokes okay. and then you're just going to come in a little bit smaller okay. not too red definitely want it to be more orangey looking you just want that little bit of orange and you could always just go in and give it a good coverage guys too if you want and then do the same thing that I did with the hot and just cover it in and then come in and just add a little bit come over side load into your red and then just add your odd little streak in there okay a little bit of white so that they have a little bit of highlight in there in there and that's it that's basically all you need to do for his nose or her nose. Frosty, frostette. Okay, just little subtle, little, you know how carrots have those little marks on them. Okay, and then you're just coming smaller, smaller, smaller to the tip. Let it dry if you want to uh, get a little bit of coverage. Play with it a little bit that way. Just twinkle a little bit of little spots on his eyes, just little ticks all the way around. So not to say that there's a little breakup. <laughs> you see the little ticks in his eyes. Okay, and then I'm just side loading again with a little bit of white. And, you know, you can make your button look however you want. I, you know, I just did a stripe, but you can always put that white back in there again. A different style button. Okay. Once that black dries. And then just pick up your little lighter brush. And make a little X inside it okay and then what you're going to do is flip your brush around and pick up your small little liner brush so they get tiny little dots okay so you might have to dab it once or twice and then come and dab once okay, so you want a little bit of a circle on those that thread comes through just subtle, just a little bit bigger than the edge of the line that you put in there. Looks like that button. <laughs> There's Frostette. What do you think, guys? Think you can do that? <laughs> you like them? <laughs> Okay, 
All right. Well, that was the fr fastest frosty that I could possibly do for you. And then plus also give you all the extra little tidbits and, on floating mediums and flow mediums and um, the frost medium. I was going to show you guys that as well a little bit. And you just need a tiny little bit of um, paint as opposed to, like it doesn't really say exactly how much, but it, it says mix with, you know, other acrylic paints, right? So I'm just picking up just a tiny little bit of the white on my brush. And I'm going to work that into the frost medium. Okay, so you'll see it doesn't take much pigment at all to make it look really white. Okay, so you do want it to be more of the medium and just a tint of color. Okay. And the best way to get a nice frost look is uh, find a clean spot is using a sponge. Okay, so one of done is sponges and just speckle it on or very fine if you go over it more and more it'll start to soften right out and be more smoother look right if you go over it really quickly then you'll get a little bit more of a speckle look okay so it just depends on you know what kind of coverage you want to do and this gives it a nice frosty look and then your Whatever you want to paint on here is going to actually cover a little bit better for you as well. Because right, I used, um, actually, I used one of those sea sponges, you know, it has a little bit bigger holes on it as well. Sometimes to get a really freckled look. It's all about having fun, guys. It's uh, good timing, the beginning of December. And then uh, you guys can start adding that to the list of maybe gifts that you want to do. Give people. 